Hello everyone, today I will discuss three moment theorem. This theorem is also known as Clepillon's theorem because it was given in 1857 uh, by a French engineer named Clepillon. Now, basically, there are two types of methods in structural analysis displacement method and force method. Displacement method is like uh, we have slope reflection method in which mainly deflections are and uh, deflections and slopes are taken as unknowns. There, can, there are other methods also. Uh, force method, we have three moment theorem. This is a very popular method for analyzing continuous beam. Continuous beams. And as we know, continuous beams are indeterminate. This can also be used for uh, fixed beams having two supports and both fixed like this. So continuous beams can be and they can have several supports more than two like this. Now first of all we will derive the relationship that is given by this theorem. So according to Clapeyron's theorem or three moment theorem we have this relationship between movements at three adjacent points in a beam. It can be a continuous beam, it can be a single beam also. So if we have a beam and we have some span in it and suppose we choose any three points over it, suppose point 0.1, point 0.2, point 0.3 and of course there can be some loading on it. Any type of loading is there. Now in this particular case the relationship that this theorem gives is m1 into l1 upon i1 plus 2m2 into l1 upon i1 plus l2 upon i2 plus m3 into l2 upon i2 will be equal to minus 6a1 x1 bar upon i1 l1 minus 6a2 x2 bar upon i2 l2 plus 6 times e inside we have delta 2 minus delta 1 by l1 plus delta 2 minus delta 3 by l2. So this is the Clapeyron theorem which gives the relationship between three moments at three adjacent points. So it is basically relationship between three moments at three adjacent points in a span or in a beam. So these three adjacent points can be supports also. These can be supports also like this. Suppose I have a beam like this. So I can have one, two and three. Point one can also be fixed. Support three can also be fixed. So there can be different support conditions. This is fixed. So this relationship is valid for these also and these three points also. One, two, three. Now what is M1? M1 is bending moment at point one. M3 is bending moment at two. M3 is bending moment at point number three. And I1 is moment of inertia of the span between 1 and 2, I2 is moment of inertia of this portion 2, 3 and L1 is this length from 1 to 2, L2 is length between 2 and 3 and A1 is bending moment area between 1 and 2. So if we can plot a bending moment diagram from the given loading whatever it is assuming 1 2 as simply supported beam and 2 3 span as again simply supported beam then we can have separate bending moment diagrams assuming all the spans as simply supported beams so a1 will be area of this bending moment diagram 
a2 is area of this bending moment diagram between 2 and 3 and x1 bar is distance of center road of a1 from point 1 and x2 is distance of center road of a2 from point 3 so we have this as point 1 and this is point 2 and this is point 3 so which have come from this span 1 2 and 3 points now we will derive this relationship for this let us consider a continuous beam and out of that beam we are taking some span like this and suppose we consider any three conjective points on it point 1, point 2, point 3 this beam has got some loading on it there can be some loading on this beam like this any arbitrary loading free body diagram of 1, 2 can be shown like this having end moments as m1, m2 and whatever loading is there on it, external loading it is also shown similarly full body diagram of 2, 3 is like this now shear forces are also shown and this will be v1 here we have v2 here again v2 here we have v3 now we can have separate bending moment diagrams of these two portions 1 2 and 2 3 like this these are the corresponding bending moment diagrams due to loading considering spans 1 2 and 2 3 as independent simply supported beams so these are simply supported bending moment diagrams this is for span 1 2 and this is for span 2 3 and suppose this is the centroid of this area a1 suppose this area a1 and area a2 is this this is the centroid of a1 and let us say distance of this from 1 is a1 bar and suppose this is the centroid of a2 area and distance from point number 3 is suppose b2 bar because this would be b1 bar and this would be a2 bar and due to the end moments m1 m2 m3 suppose this is the bending moment diagram for portion 1 2 and this is m1 this is m2 and similarly we have bending moment diagram for portion 2 3 2 2 3 and this is m2 this ordinate is m3 so these are the bending moment diagrams due to end or support moments well in that case uh, support moments will be there if 1, 2 and 3 are supports so it's just like the case uh, when we have deflection at 1, 2 and 3 they're just like support settlements because this beam is going to deflect like this and these points are going to have their own deflections 1, 1 dash, 2, 2 dash, 3, 3 dash so these are just like support settlements if these are supports, if these are simply points on the span they are simply downward deflections now consider the elastic curve of the beam in between 1 and 3 so elastic curve is nothing but deflected shape now let us consider the deflected shape of this span 1, 2, 3, point 1 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0.5, 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 0.10, 0.11, 0.12, 0.13, 0.14, 0.15, 0.16, 0.17, 0.18, 0.19, 0.20,
let us say after loading these points have deflected downward by some distance and suppose this is the deflected shape which is also called as elastic curl suppose point 1 has moved to 1 dash 2 has moved to 2 dash 3 has moved to 3 dash by distances or displacements delta 1 from here to here it is delta 2 and this is delta 3 and let us say the relative displacement between these points is h1 and s3 this line is is horizontal through two days now i'll draw a tangent at two days let us say this point this line is tangent at two days on the elastic curve of the beam or deflected shape of the beam deflected curve now draw vertical lines through 1, 2 and 3 suppose the tangent at 2 dash which is this one this is tangent at 2 dash it is striking vertical through 1 at this point and this distance between 1 dash and this intersecting point is suppose t12 similarly distance of tangent from 3 dash tangent to 2 dash from 3 dash is this which is t32 now it can be seen that this height of this intersecting point from horizontal through 2 can be written as h1 minus t12 similarly this gap between tangent and horizontal line through 2 dash is given by t32 minus h3 and length between 1 to 2 is l1 2 to 3 is l2 so this length is l1 and the length on the other side is l2 so just observe these two similar triangles consider these two similar triangles in this one and in this one so in these two triangles we have this angle which is here equal to angle on the other side so this angle which is say 2 theta 2 1 and this is angle theta 2 3 they should be equal because of similar triangles because there are two lines intersecting one is tangent at 2 dash and other is horizontal line at 2 dash so these two angles must be equal now from the geometry it is clear that theta 2 1 is nothing but h1 minus t 1 2 by l 1 it must be equal to theta 2 3 which is t 3 2 minus h 3 this one by l 2 so it can be rearranged as t 1 2 by l 1 plus t 3 2 by l 2 will be equal to h1 by l1 plus h3 by l2 suppose this is equation 1 now let's move further now how can we get values of t12 and t32 well we know this theorem which is called as moment area theorem number 2 which is also called as Morse theorem or second theorem which can be used to compute or obtain the expression for deflections 
reflections in beams. So according to that theorem, T12 can be given by 1 upon E1 I1, where E1 and I1 are the modulus of elasticity and moment of inertia of span 1, 2 into moment of area of bending Venn diagram between 1 and 2 about point 0.1 so that simply means uh, according to this theorem if we have any beam and we have some reflection of some point 1 to 1 dash 2 to 2 dash if we draw a tangent at 2 then distance between the reflected point 1 from the tangent this one which is t12 that can be obtained using this formula so here we will get t12 as 1 upon e1 i1 well, e1 i1 i will write here e1 i1 l1 and e2 i2 and l2 are the properties of 2 3 span 2 3 so now we will get the moment of area of bending Venn diagram between 1 and 2. So in this case, we we'll go back to the bending Venn diagrams and observe here that uh, we will consider these two bending Venn diagrams for computing T12. So we will add the moment of area A1 about point 1 to moment of this area area of end bending moment diagram about point 0.1 so this is point 0.1, this is point 0.2 this is point 0.2, this is 3 so here moment of A1 about point 0.1 is simply A1 into A1 bar so area into distance of centroid from 1 and as far as this trapezium is concerned just divide this trapezium into two triangles by joining M1 and 2 so we have two triangles here now centroid of this triangle lower triangle is this one whose distance from point 1 must be L1 by 3 so one third of the height of this triangle and area of this lower triangle is half into M1 into L1 so this is the area this is the distance so we will multiply these together to get moment of this lower part about point 0.1 similarly we have this triangle upper triangle shaded as green the centroid of this triangle is here the distance of this centroid will be two third of L1 L1 is the height of this triangle and area of this triangle will be of course half into base which is m2 into its side which is l1 so we will multiply this area with this distance to get the moment so here we have got three terms to be added a1 into a1 bar and then half m1 l1 into l1 by 3 and half m2 l1 into 2, 2 by 3 of L1 so that will give us the total moment of area of bending moment diagram between 1 and 2 about 0.1 so I am writing those terms here so 1 by E1 I1 into A1 into A1 bar plus half M1 L1 into L1 by 3 this is blue triangle plus half into M2 L1 into 2 by 3 of L1 so this is from lower triangle so we have obtained it from those two triangles like this we had this triangle and we had this triangle height of both the triangles is L1 so we have got two areas two centroids and distances of centroid both the centroids from one are known this L1 by 3 this is 2 L1 by 3 and we have just used here and this is a 
in moment of simply spotted bending moment diagram area about 0.1 between 1 and 2 area of bending moment diagram between 1 and 2 span so this can be simplified as t12 is equal to 1 upon 6e1 i1 into 6a1 into a1 bar plus m1 l1 square plus 2 m2 l1 square which can further be written as well it will be simplified later now similarly for span 2 3 this was for span 1 2 now for span 2 3 we will go by the same procedure if you look here this time we will take moments about 0.3 so therefore t32 which is like this in this case 0.2 this is tangent at 2 dash this is 0.3 this is 0.2 3 has gone to 3 dash now distance of 3 dash from tangent of t2 vertical distance that is t32 and according to uh, again Mohr's second theorem or moment area second theorem we get t32 as 1 by e2 i2 into moment of bending moment diagram area between 2 and 3 about point number 3 so therefore t32 would be equal to e2 i2 into a2 b2 bar plus half m2 l2 into 2 by 3 l2 plus half m3 l2 into l2 by 3 so here again consider two bending moment diagrams one was simply spotted bending moment diagram between 2 and 3 that had area a2 and distance of its centroid from 3 was b2 bar and we had another bending moment diagram between 2 and 3 coming from end moments and that was like this this height was m3 this ordinate was m2 so we can always divide this into two parts two triangles so lower triangle which is this one centroid of this triangle is here at a distance of l2 by 3 where l2 is length of this triangle or you can see it is height as good as height of these triangles and upper triangle is this one whose centroid is at a distance of 2 third of l2 from 3 so simply by multiplying area with the corresponding distance of centroid from a, uh, from third point we can obtain these area uh, these moments it is this one and for this it is this one and multiplication of these two has gone here so we can have t32 as 1 by 6 e2 i2 into 6 a2 b2 bar plus 2 m2 l2 square plus m3 l2 square now substituting these values of t12 and t32 simply substitute these two expressions into equation number one which was obtained earlier this one so what will you get here we will get this 6e1 i1 plus uh, sorry into 6a1 into a1 bar by l1 plus m1 l1 plus 2 m2 l1 plus we have 6e2 i2 into 6a2 b2 bar upon l2 plus 2 m2 l2 plus m3 l2 and this will be equal to h1 by l1 plus h3 h3 by l2 where h1 and h3 are the vertical distances between 1 dash 2 dash and 2 dash and 3 dash respectively so 
that we have seen earlier. So these are just like settlement of one, two days related to one days and h3 is uh, settlement of two days related to one days, uh, three days. Sorry. Now multiplying both sides by six, we get this relationship one upon e1 i1 into six a1 a1 bar upon l1 plus m1 l1 plus two m2 l1 plus one upon e2 i2 in within the bracket eight six a2 b2 bar upon l2 plus 2m2 l2 plus m3 l2 and that will be equal to 6 times h1 by l1 plus h3 by l2 so multiply this inside multiply this inside and rearrange so we get this expression as 6a1 a1 bar upon e1 i1 l1 plus m1 l1 upon e1 l1 plus 2m2 l1 upon e1 i1 uh, so this will also be i1 here plus 6 a2 b2 bar upon e2 i2 l2 plus 2m2 l2 upon e2 i2 plus m3 l2 upon e2 i2 will be equal to 6 into h1 by l1 plus h3 by l2 so combining the similar terms we have here m1 l1 upon e1 i1 plus 2 m2 can be taken as common inside we'll have l1 upon e1 i1 plus l2 upon e2 i2 bracket closed plus m3 l2 upon e2 i2 plus 6 a1 a1 bar upon e1 i1 l1 plus 6 a2 b2 bar upon e2 i2 l2 will be equal to 6 times uh, h1 by l1 plus h3 by l2 so earlier we had expressed uh, a1 bar as x1 bar and b2 bar as x2 bar so refer to the initial explanation here this is as good as a1 bar and x2 is as good as b2 bar same thing there's no there's no difference between these parameters so it is b2 bar now sometimes e is a constant and in that case if it is so uh, e1 can be kept as e and which is also equal to e2 in that case the e1 and e2 can be replaced by e so in that case we will have this three moment equation as this m1 l1 upon i1 plus 2m2 into l1 upon i1 plus l2 upon i2 plus m3 l2 upon i2 plus 6 a1 a1 bar upon i1 l1 plus 6 a2 b2 bar upon i2 l2 will be equal to 6 into h1 by l1 plus h3 by l2 one thing that can be noted here h1 and h2 are nothing but settlements of 2 point number 2 with respect to 1 and 3 respectively so whenever we have support settlements, so accordingly we can have values of h1 and h2. Sometimes if there is no settlement, in that case h1 and h2 will be 0 if there is no support settlement. As I told you, uh, this equation is equally applicable to the case when point 1, 2 and 3 are supports. They can be support in a continuous beam. So that will be, that will go the same way, no change except that h1 and h2 will be 0 if there is no settlement if there is some settlement then h1 and h2 may have some values now if i is also constant that is moment of inertia is constant so in that case i1 will be equal to i2 and 
we can say EI which is called as flexural rigidity if that is a constant in that case this formula becomes n1 l1 so of course i1 and i2 will be cancelled plus 2 m2 into l1 plus l2 plus m3 l2 plus 6 a1 a1 bar upon l1 plus 6 a2 b2 bar upon l2 that is equal to 0 so this is the final equation which is used for analysis of beams with same EI this is for the case when I is not constant but E is constant and earlier this was the case when E and I is not uniform so there can be E1 not equal to E2 and I1 is also not equal to I2 in that case we go for this by this formula for E being constant we go for this formula and this is the case when we have EI is constant so this is called as Clapeyron's theorem, Clapeyron's equation or popularly known as three moment equation simply because it relates three moments at three adjacent points so this is the proof of a three moment equation thank you for attention